Marhaba. In this video, we will discuss some basic uses of common built-in functions in MATLAB. Find, input, and a few that are used for random number generation. We won't explore every possible syntax with these functions. If you are interested in learning more, refer to the MathWorks website. First, let's look at three functions for random number generation, rand, randin, and randi. An example of the rand function is shown below. I called on the function in the same way on two different occasions, and I received different results. Most other functions would return the exact same results if we pass in the same inputs. Can anything ever be truly random? That is an interesting philosophical question, but beyond the scope of this course. At best, software, including MATLAB, can produce pseudo-random numbers. These are numbers that appear random to us as users, but there is a deterministic algorithm acting behind the scenes. The most basic use of the rand function, with no input arguments, returns a single random number between 0 and 1. We can create a matrix of random numbers by including two input arguments, which define the requested number of rows and columns. In this example, we obtain a 2 by 3 matrix. Each of the values contained fall on the interval 0 to 1. What if we want random numbers on a different interval? We transform the output of the base rand function. In this example, the goal is to obtain random numbers between 0 and 8. The output of the rand function produces numbers between 0 and 1. So, we multiply all of those numbers by 8 to scale them up. The n in rand n stands for normal. This function produces a random number on the normal or Gaussian distribution. You will study this in depth in a statistics course. The very quick summary is that the average value is a zero, values can be negative or positive, and the further away from zero, the less likely that value is to occur. The chances of getting a number larger than plus three or smaller than minus three are less than half a percent. The i in rand i stands for integer. The previous random functions produced outputs with decimal places. This function will only produce integers. We need to tell MATLAB the interval from which to pick the number. If we only provide a single input argument, the interval will be one through that number. If we provide a vector with two values, the interval will be between those two limits inclusive. Finally, if we want an array of random values produced, we must provide the interval followed by the number of rows and columns. In this example, all the random integers fall between 1 and 7 because of the 7 in the first field. And a 2 by 4 matrix is produced because of the 2 and 4 as input arguments. Shifting gears, the find function is used to identify values in an array that meet certain criteria. Perhaps the most common use is to find which indices hold a certain number. That is shown here as syntax number three, but we'll survey all of these. If no specific condition is indicated, for example, equal to, greater than, less than, then MATLAB will search for the non-zero indices. In these examples, we are searching through matrix X to find as shown. The syntax find X returns the linear indices of non-zero numbers. Linear indices means counting top to bottom, then left to right. So here, the 5 is at index 3, the 2 is at index 4, and so on. More often, we like to see the rows and columns rather than the linear indices. To obtain that output, we need to request two output arguments. The syntax for doing that is shown here. On the left side of the assignment operator, we list two variable names within brackets. Reading the results of this function call, the first non-zero entry is located at row 3, column 1. The next non-zero entry is located at row 1, column 2, and so on. Let's look at examples of finding values that meet a specific condition. We'll use matrix X as defined here. First, we ask MATLAB for all the indices within X holding values equal to 6. 
it is important to use a double equal sign for this request. Why not the single equal sign? Because that is the assignment operator, and we don't want to assign a value to x here. The results are what we expect. There are two sixes in the matrix, so there are two indices listed here. The first six is located at linear index seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the next six comes right after at index eight. To find the row and column indices, again, I simply need to request two output arguments. The first six is located at row one, column three. The second six is located at row two, column three. Lastly, sometimes I don't want to know all the occurrences of a value. The second input argument to the find function tells MATLAB how many indices I want returned. In this example, I request just the first time that an x value is equivalent to six. That happens to be at index seven, as we have seen before. The final slide in this quick overview highlights the input function. This is how we can use the code to request information from the user through a prompt. A simple example is shown here, used for computing the volume of a cylinder. In the script, the radius is fixed at four centimeters. The height value, however, will be determined by the user. When the script is run, this prompt appears in the command window that was included within the input function. The script will wait until the user types in a number and presses enter. That number gets stored under the variable named height. Then the script continues and computes the volume. A few things to notice. First, this is a poor prompt because it does not specify the units. Second, the character array within quotes will be replicated in the command window exactly as typed, spaces, letters, typos, and all. Finally, why do we see the result for vol appear in the command window? Because that command was not suppressed with a semicolon.